Tristan and Gunther, always good for a smile. Tristan and Gunther, they are cooking in the wild. Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to another episode of Cooking, Cooking in the Wild. Today we're here in a small village deep in the mountains of eastern France. This region is famous for its world-renowned Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. But wine isn't the only thing they specialize in. That's right, Tristan. There's also another craft they perfected here, but have managed to keep it a secret for nearly 200 years. A secret that will blow your mind. Completely blow your mind. We believe this region to be the, the birthplace of cold, cold brew coffee. coffee. Years ago, we we read about this theory in a book titled The Possible Untold Secrets of Cold Brew Coffee in Eastern France. But we didn't take it seriously until Tristan woke up one morning with a memory in his head of something his great grandfather had told him when he was a small child. And he was from France. What did he tell you, Tristan? He said, Tristan, don't believe everything that you read. And that's when we knew we were on to something. We've spent the last three months researching and confirming this theory. The people here were skeptical of us at first, but gradually we built their trust. They gave me this. I bet you're wondering what we found out, aren't you? Well, what we're, we're about, about to show you. Start off by taking fresh roasted coffee and soaking it in cold mountain spring water for seven days. The beans will absorb this water and take on the subtle appearance of a Pinot Noir grape. After that, take an oak wine barrel and cut it directly in half. Drill 100 holes into the bottom of the wine barrel. 100 holes represents 100% dedication to the craft. That's what they told us. Once the holes are drilled, elevate the wine barrel and stabilize it to a secure platform. Today, we're using a traditional brew platter that originated in this region. Drain any remaining water from the beans that have been soaking and set it aside. We'll be using that later. Dump the beans into the wine barrel and place a clean pan underneath the brew platter. Now, use the leftover water to thoroughly rinse your feet clean. This water will both disinfect your feet and acclimate them to the pH balance of the beans. At this point, step into the wine barrel and get a feel for the dance floor. Traditionally, there was live music played during the brew process to give a gentle rhythm. The people here say they can taste the difference between a cold brew coffee that was rushed and one that was brewed to a perfect rhythm. We don't have live music today, Tristan, but I was able to borrow an old record player to help us along. Are you ready? Sure am. Hey Tristan, what do you think? It's definitely got a good nose. But what does it taste like? That tastes like the best freaking cold brew I've ever had. Well, there you have it. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of Cooking, Cooking in, in the Wild. Tristan and Gunther, always good for a smile. Tristan and Gunther, they are cooking in the wild. That Tristan is quite a dancer.